How's it going? I'm Ben Stiller, and welcome to the show. We're really excited because this week Scotty from Star Trek is going to be here. Oh, hi, Andy. I wanted to. This is Andy Dick, cast member. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah. So, James um, Doohan, Scotty's going to be here. I wanted to talk yeah. to you confidentially about yeah. the guest. Yeah. Um, Scotty. Scotty. Yeah. I was wondering, I mean, that's a good guest. I mean, yeah. But could we have gotten someone like, uh, I don't know, anybody? Like Bet, who? Bette Midler or somebody? Bette Midler? I mean, or, or you know what I was thinking is Bruce Springsteen. Andy. He's in town now. Andy, it's Scotty. That would be great! Bruce Springsteen! I know, it's Andy, it's Scotty, I'm sorry. No, no, okay, no, yeah. I'm excited, because uh, I'm a big Star Trek You already planned it ahead and everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, then don't worry about it. Okay. It'll be good. Yeah. Couldn't get Springsteen, he was unavailable. Yeah, that'll be good. Legends of Springsteen. It was like the most incredible thing that has ever happened to me. Springsteen was in town getting a concert. I couldn't afford the tickets, so I'm in this bar, drowning my sorrows. <laughs> and uh, suddenly the door bangs open, and who walks in but the man himself. I mean, I had always heard stories about the boss showing up in some small bar, but come on! I never thought it would happen to me. One, two, three, four! Must have been up there for like 15 hours. He played every song he ever wrote, and one of my all-time favorites. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. But that was nothing, right? After he's done playing, he grabs a pail and mop and starts washing the floors. I mean, he was really scrubbing. And if that ain't enough, he refills all the ketchup bottles. And the next morning when I woke up, I had been freshly shaved, manicured, and my shoes had been polished. And they call James Brown the hardest working man in show business. <laughs> Welcome back to Amish Studs. I'm your host, Mark DiCarlo. Today, we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, the heart of Amish country. Our two studs, Noah and Jebediah, both have no hearts, but the game ain't over yet, so let's do it, huh? Woo! Woo! All right! Well, Noah, what would you say girls find appealing about you? Well, sir, I'm a plain man, but mm -hmm. if forced to choose a quality, I'd say my skill at mending a harness. Well, it's always the quiet ones who are into the kinky stuff, huh? <laughs> okay, well, we asked our three young ladies here what they thought of their dates with you, Noah, and this is what they had to say. I was impressed with his incredible plowing ability. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Okay. He really knew how to churn butter. <laughs> I'd like to hear more about that. Okay, and finally, he was a man of the land and I wanted to get dirty. <laughs> All right, Noah, you know how we play the game. You tell me who said what. 
I'll give you one of these. Stud with most hearts at the end of the game gets to go on a dream date with a girl of his choice, and we pay for it. Well, uh, seeing as how the rules command it, um, I was impressed with his incredible plowing ability would be Beth. Mm, Beth. No, I did not say that. Okay, what did you say, Beth? I said he really knew how to churn butter. Now, hold on a second. What is it with this churning butter thing? What, other guys can't churn butter? No, sir, none of them possess the proper stamina. Ouch! I know what you're talking about, let me tell you. Now, listen here. If you persist in nurturing these unclean thoughts, I will end this discussion, hitch up my body, and deal with you in a most unpleasant manner. Oh, oh, oh hey, hey, take a chill pill, Lurch. This guy's acting like I just installed electricity in his house. Don't worry, game's almost over. Okay, it's time to find out who's the bigger stud. Now, Jebediah, you and Noah both don't have any hearts, so the game's really up for grabs. Who'd you choose? I do not choose to continue courting Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And I do not choose Susie. So if it is approved by the deacon and her father, I would like to call on Beth again. Mm, all right, well, Beth. All right, well. Okay, well, if Beth picks you, where are you going on your dream date? We'll take a buggy ride up to Hassam's Orchard mm. and have some fresh cider. Mm, all right, sounds good. You'll both probably be parched after churning all that butter. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny, Noah? After churning all that butter, I know of what you speak. Well, I'll bet you do. No. <laughs> From what I heard, there's plenty of butter. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, well, why don't you pull it together there, Noah, and tell us who you chose. I did not choose Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I did not choose Beth. I chose Susie. Susie? Why'd you choose Susie? Because of her incredible body. It is forbidden fruit, and I'm a fruit fly! Noah Stumper, we are leaving here. And now it's without my Susie. She's the chosen fruited one. This is all your fault. You and all the other outsiders. Why can't you leave us alone? You and your graven image take us must go. Well, they say the Amish people are dumb, but let me tell you something. I think that's a load of fertilizer. I'm Mark DeCarlo. I'll see you next week on Amish Stunts. Ooh, look at me. I'm Amish. I'm funny. Woo, woo. Amish, Amish. Hey, hey, watch it there, little buddy. Woo, look at me. I ride a buggy, and I have no buttons. Woo, woo, woo. I'm... Okay, that was that was funny, Amish studs. I thought that was pretty good. That was, you know. It's kind of funny if you enjoy picking on really peace-loving, defenseless people. I kind of had a problem with that, and that's what I wanted to discuss with you. Why don't you just talk to my agent, okay, Janine? I can never get him on the phone. He won't call me back. Well, he's busy. You know, he's busy with uh, people. You know, agents, they're very slick characters. They get you jobs, and they deal in show business, and, you know, they what? deal with musicians. Who else does he handle? Oh, you know, Run DMC. You ever seen them? Yeah. Rap group? Yeah, they're very, very funny. It'd be interesting to see what he'd be like with Run DMC, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. I'd like to All see right. it. Okay. Well, why don't we take a look? Yo, Bussin, man. We just want to do our new song on the Ben Stiller show. That's it. All right, That's guys, can I just tell you something? As your new agent, who you pay to represent you, I have to say this. You be illin'. Really, I gotta be honest here. You've done the rap thing, all right? Let's move on. Come on, let's try something new. Let's break the bounds. You know, let's do a sitcom, all right? Come on, run. You rent an apartment. Betty White comes in. She rented the same apartment. Jay lives downstairs. D lives upstairs. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, she teaches you how to cook. Jay teaches her how to scratch. And, you know, it's great. It's perfect. It reaches everybody. I ain't gonna reach nobody. We ain't doing it because it's stupid. Word up, man. It's bananas, man. It's real stupid. <laughs> bananas. See, I love this. This is great. You guys have a whole comic thing happening. You don't even realize it. I mean, Run's playing off of Jay. Jay's playing off of D. You're all playing off each other. You don't even no, I mean, if the Marx Brothers saw you right now, they would flip. Right now, in their graves, they're, you know, they're doing, they're breaking. You know, they're doing electric boogaloo, and they don't know what happened. I don't even know why I didn't think of this 10 years ago, and right now it's hitting me. I'm saying, boom, talk show. Three of you guys doing a talk show? Forget it. That's why, you know, that's why Miller didn't happen. It was one guy. Three of you guys doing it? Forget it. Runs to the couch. Jay's a sidekick. D's, you know, leading the band. That's it. Boom, it's happened. It's over. And Leno has, you know, run away in the hills, hiding naked, looking for his mommy. I mean, this is what we're talking about. Yo, check this out, man. We just want to do our song, man. We just want to rock the mic. I hear that. Hey, I think Run said it best. You know, Jam Master Jay, he's the one in charge. It's up to him to rock the beats, which are truly large. But I got to tell you, I'm getting very big offers for you guys, all right? I just got an infomercial thing they want you guys to do. It's some product. I don't know. It cuts your hair with magnets. Magnets? 
Forget it, Fat Boys took it. You don't even want to touch it. Yo, we don't want to do commercials, man. We just want to rock the mic, like my man said. Hey, who are we talking about here? We're talking about you guys. You know, you slay all suckers, you perpetrate, you lay down law from state to state. I know that. I mean, look at it. Everybody's doing a bad impression of you guys now. You know, if I want to see an impression, I'll go see Rich Little at the Trop. I'm not going to go see NRA. NWA. Yeah, whatever. Hang on. Listen, Jennifer, uh, get me uh, two tickets for Rich Little at the Trop. You guys want to go, huh? We do a thing? No? Forget it. Anyway, we're doing the Ben Stiller show on Sunday. You don't want to do TV, all right? You're much bigger than television. You guys are major motion picture actors. Let's stop thinking with the little head, and let's start thinking with the big head. I mean, I'm talking about a major motion picture career for you guys. You know, why aren't you doing Batman 3, which they're casting now? You guys could play the villain in Batman 3. No problem, you know? Jay, just make up an animal. Jay, who am I? Ooh, I'm Koala Man. Yeah, I climb up trees, and then I scrape people, and I got a little fuzzy nose, and I go on an airline, you know? And D, why can't you do uh, You don't even have to be an animal. Just pick something. You know, look, I'm Tree Man. Every day I grow a root, and then I go up the tree, and then I, you know, an apple falls off me. Ooh, the apple's gonna hit you. Scary. This is, you know, this is, you know, run. Excuse me, run. Danny DeVito playing the penguin gets in there. Ooh, look at me, I'm a penguin. No, you are a penguin. And I mean that in a good way. I mean, I look at you in a tuxedo, and, you know, I see the soul of a very lonely, lost penguin, and it's a beautiful thing. I'm just saying, think about this stuff, guys, all right? Really. You can do that, okay? We, well, just think about it, okay? Really, guys, just, all right? Listen. Peace out, guys, right? Word to your mothers. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, when Tom Bosley gets out of the bathroom, send him in. I will never forget it. I was nine and a half months pregnant and just finishing up a double shift when, bang, I started going into labor. Y'all! There wasn't a doctor around for miles, and none of the guys in the bar knew how to deliver a baby. Just then, the door swings open, and who walks in but Mr. Bruce Springsteen? Legends of Springsteen. Hey there, little girl. Is your daddy home? Did he go and leave you all alone? Come on. Don't worry, he was incredible. And here she comes. Oh, she's coming out to Jungle Land. That's right. Come on, push and breathe now. Push and breathe. Oh, she's a feisty little one. Look at that. Born in the USA. Huh? Yeah. It was the happiest moment of my life. But that happiness quickly turned to horror as moments later, two space aliens entered the bar and said they needed my baby to fuel their rocket ship. Everybody panicked. Everybody but Bruce, that is. Hey, man, how's them foofs up kilo, all right? That's right, stay out. Thanks to Bruce, little Spring Stan is here with her mama today, and not in some gas station up on Venus. You believe, you believe it? I'm still young. I'm young at heart. I still get cavity. So what was your problem? What was the problem? Uh, with my teeth? No, with the show. You said you had a oh, problem with the show. Yeah. Um, well, we're opposite 60 minutes, right. and um, I think we need to compete on the same level. I think we need to be informational. We need to teach. We need to... Bob, it's a comedy show. I mean, we're doing... Oh, yeah, well, 60 minutes has got Andy Rooney, so they got us beat on that level, too, you know? I mean, well, I think this let's is... compete on the informational level. Let's do something okay. that's informative. But, you know, we're on Fox, so, you know, it should be kind of racy and kind of... Okay, racy but informative. We'll yeah. do a whole informational... Kind of ben, maybe you, a you documentary do or something like that? That'd be great. Okay. Something like that'd be great. A little documentary thing. I, I'd be knocked okay. out. Great. Why don't you get to the dentist? Because I know you're... Okay. Okay. Bob Temporary to filling. The dentist, you know. As far back as we can recall, man has strived to conquer space. But there's one chapter in this quest that few people remember. It is late 1960, and a resolute President Kennedy is prepared to do anything to surpass Russia in the race to space. The Soviets have successfully launched a dog, Laika, into orbit. And while America experiences a brief success with the flight of Chuckles the Chimpanzee, Russia immediately counters with the launch of a seal, Lupovnik. An indignant American team of scientists respond by sending a camel named Dilly, followed by a small baby elephant, and finally a team, Zimba, a three-foot garden snake, and Happy, a field mouse. Only Zimba returns. Kennedy has played right into the Kremlin's hands. Laughingly labeled a space-age Dr. Doolittle, he quickly responds with a cunning plan. Kennedy intends to send high-fashion models into space. Across the country, modeling agencies send their best to Washington to see who has the right stuff. More than 4,000 applicants are seen. 
with the president screening each one personally in intense closed-door sessions. Finally, the field is whittled to two candidates who are affectionately dubbed Bim and Bo. Physical training begins and the pair are such impressive specimens that it's hard to tell who's learning more, the models or the scientists. Up and down, up and down, Bim. Before long, it will just be up, up and away. This is a star, Bo. Pay attention. Soon it will be your closest neighbor. Marathon sessions bring the two up to speed on the latest technological developments. It soon becomes clear that new hairsprays and eyelash sealants will need to be developed for space travel. Sessions in the zero gravity chamber are televised nationally and become so popular that Gunsmoke, the number one show at the time, is forced to change nights. Meanwhile, the space program is getting a whole new look. Space, and if we say it's a space suit, so there must be space, you know? So all around space, all over space. Turn around, turn around. See, on, on Bo, she has space, space. What is this space? It is beautiful woman's space, you know? She's very feminine. Okay, okay, good. Finally, the model knots are ready. On a chilly, momentous April morning, Bim and Bo are escorted to the launch area. Goodbyes are never easy, and today it seems that everyone needs a reassuring hug. But duty calls, and as they make their way up the launching pad, everyone cops one last loving look. The president arrives for a final closed capsule session, and then... In T-minus three, two, one, we have liftoff. And there are American models in space. Godspeed to you, Bim and Bo. But six minutes into the mission, a problem develops. Bim has made a grave miscalculation, bringing her personal stylus along for the ride. With the extra weight, the capsule won't be able to sustain re-entry, and the models, who do not get off the phone for the next two hours, are unreachable. However, officials at NASA consider the mission a rousing success. Much has been learned and much enjoyment had. And legend has it, on a clear night, one can still see two beautiful models soaring across the heavens. James is here? Oh, look, James Doohan is here. That's great. Hello, James Doohan. Good morning, Ben. How you doing? That's fine. How are you? You can make it? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, James is going to sure. be our guest on the show this week. And uh, so where you have to make up? Getting, well, getting, well I mean, somewhere where they might do some right, makeup right. on me. I noticed you're very well made yes, up. Yes, I'm very yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm made up. You got it. Well, I'm probably as red as you are right now. Well, I feel I feel kind of like I'm kind of I don't know. I'm not, I get very nervous around you because you know you're a big. Oh, I don't <laughs> mind. I know. I appreciate it. So uh, we're gonna watch some films, right? So, huh? You know, we just watch some films this week and uh, oh, yeah. oh, talk well, about okay. them. Yeah, I thought maybe yeah. we talk about Star Trek a little bit. You know, maybe. Why not? All right, let's great. Do that. All right, let's do it. All yeah, right. Okay. We'll see you in a sec. Yeah. Okay, all right. Good. Great. The Post Hole Digger by Wilson, available at the Home Shop. Uh, boy, you must get annoyed a lot of the time when people just always asking questions about Star Trek, all the Star Trek nerds coming at you all the time, huh? No. No? No, I don't get annoyed, you know, and, uh, unless uh, I have a mouthful. And, uh, right. Okay, so what's the difference between impulse power and warp drive? Just... Oh, impulse power is like a rocket. Right. You know, so why or couldn't you... ionization. So, so in the engine room, those remember the like long things behind you? Was that the impulse engines? Yeah. Sitting on the edge forever, right? Yeah. Okay, when you go through the time portal, right? Why did the costumes change on the menagerie, which was like the original? Wasn't the menagerie? Well, you cut the menagerie into two different pieces, but that was the cage, the original first episode. On the enemy within episode, when you beam down that little dog, why? I didn't understand. How could the dog survive, but then when, when he comes back, he's turned into two different things? So could you ever actually go into the warp the warp pods? The long, those were the warp pods. Oh, sure. On you the can side. go into you the warp pods. Oh, yeah. You have to okay. check them out. You know, have to be able to check them out. You, you could Wow. I can't believe I'm sitting here with Scotty. Wouldn't it be great if we became friends?
of matter to uh, mix with antimatter. So in the game series of Triskelion, those those battering rams that they had, where they, were, I mean, I just got, I couldn't figure out whether or not they were actually ben, were they supposed to fight hey, to the death will, or not? No, will you stop it on the Star Trek questions? I've had enough of that, you know. God, I get it, okay. uh, you know, week in, week out, right. all the time. Everybody Star Trek, you know. Hi, Scotty. Oh, man, this, uh, you know. Come on, uh, like, can't we find some uh, more interesting thing yes. to talk about yes. than Star I'm sorry. Trek? I'm sorry. Yes. I just ask you one more thing. As sure as I am honest, I'll never forget that day. I was working on a speech and something about it just wasn't flowing. <clears throat> All of a sudden. Hey there, something not flowing? Legends of Springsteen. Bruce sat with me for the next three hours, pointing out where I had made mistakes. See over there. Now, why don't you try um, four score and seven years ago? You like that? Well, it's got a better ring to it than 87, you know? Well, you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of mileage out of that speech. Thanks, Bruce. Well, that's about it. We're out of time. I'd just like to thank my special guest, James Doohan, Scotty from Star Trek. Thank you very much. Okay, it's Ben. Great having you on the show. All right. oh, I got you, you something. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. Scotty doll. Well, thanks very okay. much, Ben. Hey, you know, maybe okay. we get it. Maybe we could hang out, you know, get a get some meat or something. Well, no, I don't think so, Ben. I, I'm I'm pretty busy. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. 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 Well, thanks care. for doing the show. All right. Can I just one thing I didn't on that way to eat an episode with the space hippies said, oh, uh, when, right. they, when on, they came out no, no more Star Trek there were a little no. song he sang go to no. crack my knuckles and jump for joy I got a clean bill of health from Dr. McCoy wow I just thought that was